What is going on guys? David Productions 345 here. Got the beast in the background. We're gonna be doing a daily drivability video and whether or not it's worth it or not. Let's get right into the video guys. Here's the beast. All the different angles of her. Here's the back, there's the taillights. They look. This side as well. So I'm gonna start with the interior guys because I'm getting into the car right now. And also, this is where you spend most of your time. So in terms of the comfort of the seats, the seats are very comfy. Uh, they're very bolstered, as you guys can see. Uh, these are the heated and cooled seats. It depends on your options for your, the trim you're looking at. This is the max for the 11 to 14. So basically this has all the features. So it has a sunroof, heated and cooled cup holders, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. The seating position is pretty good. The windshield isn't too slanted. Um, it has a pretty thick A-pillar, which you have to get used to. The materials are all right. I guess they use the same stuff from 11 to 20. This steering wheel being the exact same as my dad's Dodge Grand Caravan. Kind of a letdown. But um, some of the other features in the interior include beat speakers. The 8.4 inch touchscreen right here. This is a nice screen. The newer cars have a better Uconnect system. It's more updated. This one is kind of outdated. Glove box is a pretty good size. It has a light on the inside. Let's go to the back seats real quick. So I'm gonna sit basically where my seat would be exactly. And this, I still have some room back here. The head room is pretty good. I'm six foot and my head is not touching the ceiling because as you guys can see, there's a little bit of a gap. The ceiling ends here and then the window starts here. So it gives you about maybe like an inch more of headroom in the back. The seating position is a pretty good angle though. As I said before, this is a leather interior. I don't know anything about the cloth interiors. So the next part of this video I wanna talk about is the performance of this car. So this is a 5.7 liter V8, 370 horsepower, 395 pound-feet of torque. If I'm being honest, it's a pretty good amount of power and torque. For a daily driver, it's not too bad. Um, merging on highways is fun because you don't really need to worry about anything. You got the power to speed up a lot. Obviously, 5.5 seconds here to 60 is not the best. So the next thing to talk about is handling. This car's a boat. It's a heavy car. It's a wide car. So the steering radius is not great. It's not horrible, but it's not great. So we definitely gotta get used to the dimensions of this car, being that it's wider. The main part of the video basically is fuel efficiency. Let's go to that fuel economy page to show you guys what I mean. There you go. And there's the green bar on the screen that tells you whether you're driving efficiently or not. So the gas mileage is one of the main reasons why you would or wouldn't daily drive a car. In terms of this car, <laughs> Kind of gotten used to the gas mileage not being great if you travel a lot then it wouldn't be bad because you'd be driving more highway miles i drive mostly city now so but yeah definitely um gas mileage is not the best so it's it's a hit or miss honestly like me personally i've kind of gotten used to it filling up two times a week basically i would fill up like monday and then thursday or friday $70 each fill up, depending on what I'm doing that week and how I've driven. Obviously, if you drive this car with a soft foot, it'll be better. But like, then you're diminishing the purpose of owning a V8 if you just cared about gas mileage. But like, don't be expecting great gas mileage on a V8. This car gets okay gas mileage, when I was driving to school, driving about like 50 miles a day, there and back, um, I was getting about like 16, 17, 18, which is pretty good. Honestly, for a V8, I was pretty happy with it. You guys can see, look, I'm getting a good gas mileage now. I reset it, and as I said before, it all depends on how you drive. So I'm way home from my location, from where I was filming that. I reset it, so you guys can see. Very good gas mileage. Also guys, there's no exhaust in this video just because I wanna talk and be able to hear myself. <laughs> And the exhaust kind of drowns it out, so. So the next question you might be asking yourself, is it practical driving a Dodge Charger RT with a V8 in 2023? To answer your question, yes. So right now, as you guys can see, I am getting 15 miles per gallon. 
just went down to 14.9 but this car honestly if you drive it with a soft foot it'll get you good gas mileage i don't really look at the gas mileage too much because at this point if you're buying a v8 and worrying about the gas mileage you're buying the wrong car so is this car practical in my eyes yes just because it's a four-door sedan it has a lot of room it has a sunroof some of them do um it's fast for what it is you're faster than maybe 50 percent of the cars on the road 60 percent of the cars on the road but um it's a four-door sedan so let me pop the trunk real quick show you guys that it's a pretty good amount of space back here you guys can see a lot of groceries can go in here back seat room is pretty good as i said before so this is a pretty practical car guys a lot of chargers are rear wheel drive so in the winter time you'd have to like put some kitty litter in the back of the car and then put some winter tires in your car and sandbags even so definitely make sure that you have the right tire setup i have an all-wheel drive model guys so i still have winter tires which are just a little bit better in the snow actually a lot better because when i was, when I was in the parking lot one time switching to rear wheel drive and then the whole car just didn't move at all so definitely make sure to have winter tires for these cars so insurance wise guys i'm not going to go into that too much just because it's all depending on certain factors like age gender how long you've been driving for how many accidents you've had etc and what kind of what kind of car you have so guys in terms of insurance rates if you have a newer rt if you're getting a newer rt i mean it'll be a lot higher than if you have an older rt model like this or even like a first gen 2006 to 10. so one of the other things i wanted to discuss is what generation of rt should i get but it's all depending on you how much money you have how much money you're willing to spend and which one you like the best I'm biased because I love the second gen or seventh gen, whatever you want to call it, this generation of RT that I have. So I'm going to obviously be biased towards this one. Um, you can get really any of them depending on what you want. If you want a more aggressive look, the 11 to 14 is the way to go. If you want a better interior, better quality uh, technology, go for a newer one. Was that what I think it was? Yes. Yes, it definitely was. Alrighty guys, another change of scenery. Next thing on the list is going to be maintenance. So I have this all written down in my notes, maintenance, and then we're gonna be kind of looking at it while we talk to you guys. So the first thing is I wrote down that an average cost to maintain a Dodge Charger per year is between $500 and $1,000. It's pretty reasonable. Um, I kind of wrote down some of the stuff that I did here starting out with oil changes I did I think two or three oil changes this year. I did my brakes this year. I did some suspension work this year I did some spark plugs this year. I did an axle this year and I also did tires. So Looking back at it oil changes is pretty cheap. I do them myself I think it's like $50 each time you buy the oil buy the filter. I already have all the tools and stuff here in terms of the brakes They were a little bit more expensive. I bought the Power Stop Z26 brakes, the performance ones, they work very well, they last a long time. Um, that's just usual maintenance, so this most of this stuff is just regular maintenance, so nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, suspension, I did my upper control arm on my passenger side. So overall guys, the suspension stuff on the chargers, at least the front suspension, it wears out a little bit quicker on the chargers. They're heavy cars guys, give, give them a break. If you wanna do it yourself, it's not hard to do, I did it myself, so it's not really hard. Going on to, spark plugs so there are 16 of them if you have an rt those are i think 120 bucks and then i put new tires on so overall maintenance is normal nothing too crazy so my car's at 105,000 miles i needed a cv axle because the boot was torn that's normal maintenance so the one thing i mentioned though was the rack and pinion so as i said before it's around 100,000 miles the car was getting old it started creaking it while turning and grinding then I seen a fluid leaking on the ground, so my rack needed to be fixed. I did that. That's the one thing that's kind of different about this car that kind of like out of the ordinary, just a random thing that happened. So that's the one problem that I had this year in terms of, the, of issues. So next is reliability. So overall, this car has been great. I have not really had any issues at all. I had one interior issue. I didn't have any overheating and I didn't have any lifter problems or any other problems really but the one issue i had was the blender actuators they are pain in the ass if you guys need to do your blenders 
don't take it to a shop because they will quote you $1,000 to do one. It's not worth it. Make sure to do it yourself. All right, guys, finally, we're moving on to the pros and cons. So, starting out with the pros, one of my favorite things about the car is it's a V8. So, you get the V8 sound, V8 power. It is the Dodge base model V8, whatever. It's still a V8, still makes rumbling sounds. So, it has four cylinder deactivation mode. All the RTs do. So, the second pro is the interior is very spacious. A lot of room on the inside. Seats are very comfortable. Um, the whole car is very big. So the third thing is it's a real drive car. So it's an enthusiast car, real wheel drive. It's a fun sports muscle car, sports sedan. Muscle sedan is what I like to call them. So, yep, real wheel drive car, enthusiast car. You can have fun with it. Burn some tires, smoke some tires out, do donuts, whatever. And then the fourth pro is creature comforts. So my car personally has heated seats, cooled seats, heated cup holders, cooled cup holders, sunroof, stuff like that. Adaptive cruise control, side mirrors that fold down when you put the car in reverse, stuff like that, really cool creature comforts. Heated rear seats even too. So most RTs you can option out and it'll be cheaper than getting a higher trim car, which is good. A lot of people like doing that. Like, especially in the used market guys, you can get a lot of RTs that have higher options for a better price. So that's the four pros for me is that. So guys, it's now, time for the cons so the first con i want to mention is the gas mileage now the one caveat for this is me personally i don't really care about the gas mileage because it's a v8 i'm buying a v8 to have fun i'm buying a v8 to have loud noises accelerate fast i'm not buying a v8 to be fuel efficient the gas mileage is not bad but it's not great so i just want to mention that number two con guys is that it's a boat it's a huge car it's a wide car gotta get used to the driving and it's just the turning radius is not great so make sure they're used to that Make sure to like test out the car in like a parking lot to make sure you know like the dimensions of your own vehicle. And then the third con would be the insurance. So as I mentioned before, it all varies on person, but your insurance rate would be higher if you have a V8 versus like a V6 or something else, or like a four cylinder. So just make sure to take that into account as well. Next thing I wanna mention, the fourth con is the blend doors. So that's what I was telling you guys about before. The one issue I had with the car was the blend doors. So they started tapping like this. And it's so annoying guys, it's very aggravating and your AC doesn't work and it blows hot air instead of cold. The fifth con I just wanna mention, it's a real wheel drive car. So if you live in a winter environment like I do, you'll want an all wheel drive car or even something else that's like a front wheel drive car. Me personally, I own an all wheel drive charger. So I'm not too worried about it, but I'm just wanna mention that is because most chargers are just rear wheel drive. So in the winter, it won't be as reliable as a front wheel drive. So just wanted to mention that guys. So the question is, should you daily drive with Dodge Charger RT? My answer, definitely. It's a fun car, it's a V8. It's spacious, it's a V8. <laughs> it still makes loud sounds. It's not a Scat, it's not a Hellcat, whatever. A lot of people hate on the RT just because it's underpowered. But honestly, they're not a bad, they're not bad cars. So, anyways guys, thank you guys for watching. We are on the road to a thousand subscribers. So make sure you hit that sub button, make sure you hit the like button, and make sure to share the video. Anyways guys, thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Peace out guys. Yeah.